right, well, good morning. Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the Future of Work Conference Week from the UCLA Career Center. And thank you so much for joining today's presentation called Level Up, Skills Employers Want and How to Develop Them Now. Uh, a few housekeeping items. So number one, yes, this event is being recorded. So if you can stay for only some of the time, don't worry, you're definitely going to be able to watch what you miss later on. Also, I will be sending a follow-up email to everybody, no matter if you are here now or if you are SVP'd. So again, if you can only stay for a little bit, that's fine. I'm gonna send you an email with the deck and a whole bunch of resources. And then lastly, um, regarding uh, conversation during today's event, let's all use the chat function. Um, I'm not gonna be looking at the Q&A today. So anything that you are wondering about, questions, clarity, comments, reactions, um, definitely please throw those into the chat. And if you have you know, thought a question, whatever that might be, and you don't wanna put it into the general chat, you can also just direct message it to me. And then I can go ahead and read that and respond to that on your behalf. Chances are other people are thinking or wondering the same thing. So that's another option for you. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, hello again. Uh, my name is Alexis Rampal. I am the Internships and Talent Development Manager here at the UCLA Career Center. Nice to meet you all. Thank you so much for joining. I would love to hear from you all in the chat. So let me know where are you zooming in from? What major are you? What class level are you? Anything else do you wanna throw in the chat? What did you grab for your snack and drink? Um, but yeah, let me know what's going on. Where are you all zooming in from? Who are you? And then I see a question from V. So where can I watch these recordings? Ooh, good question. The Career Center has its own YouTube channel. And so we actually have been in the practice of recording pretty much all of our events. And we upload those usually within a week after every single event. Okay, so let's, okay, so we got some responses. Hooray! Kara, your third year public affairs major from Westwood. Hello, Hannah. Hi, coffee. Good, get that caffeine. Graduating senior, congratulations. Daniel, a first year pre-global studies. Excellent, you got your iced coffee. All right, hi everybody. Yeah, so keep saying hello in the chat. It's nice for us all to sort of see where, we're, where we are zooming in from and our majors and our class levels. I'm so glad you're all here. Also, welcome. Some of my Career Center colleagues are joining me today. Um, so I'm so excited to have you all here as well. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? What did I promise you? So what are we gonna go over? It's going to be information and data on the skills employers are looking for now and in the future. We're gonna go over the mindset and tactics essential to navigating ongoing economic disruption and uncertainty. I'm going to share some tips on how to determine which skills to focus on. I'm absolutely going to highlight three free and virtual skill development resources that will look good on your resume and LinkedIn. And then that will include some guidance on how and where to mention these experiences on your resume. So get excited. Okay, so again, I want to hear from you all in the chat. I want to know what do you think? What skills do you think employers generally look for in any college graduate? Let me know in the chat. Team member, yep, teamwork, thank you. Work well on a team, writing, yes. Microsoft Office proficiency, thank you, Daniel. Emily says data analytics. Okay, we got a lot coming through now. Woohoo! Excellent communication. Yay! Um, Adobe. So we're getting a little bit more specific onto types of software. 
Zach says, ability to adapt quickly, blend of technical soft skills. Zach, gold star to you. You are going to see that you are more right than you know. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Keep on coming. Let's, let's find out. Okay, so I'm gonna be going over a couple of different lists with you all today. The first that we're gonna talk about are called the NACE Career Readiness Competencies. It's a mouthful. Okay, first of all, what is NACE? NACE is the National Association of Colleges and Employers. It is a professional association. There are two main populations that are members of this association. One is your college career centers or your colleges. The other is employers and or companies that are interested in recruiting early talent. Early talent is you. So current university students, graduate students, and folks from maybe one to three years out in their career. So this association has come up with a lot of great research, recommendations, position statements, etc. They have this list of eight skills. They call them career readiness competencies. It's just a list, a list of eight skills. And here they are. Please do not worry about all of the content on this slide, but I did want you to know that there are definitions associated with each of these competencies so that you get a little bit more information. The other thing I wanted to share is that this list has been very recently updated, like literally in the last month, NACE shared the updated um, NACE career readiness competencies. And what I love is that, first of all, the definitions are easier to understand. Second, they also included sample behaviors um, for every single one of these. And there is a PDF that I'm going to include in my follow-up email with, to you all that includes that. So you can take a look and say, okay, let me look at this communication. Here's some examples of what that looks like. This is super helpful to me. Okay. And so I'm just checking in the chat. Thank you so much for adding more and more of these skills. And then I see a comment Hi all, I would love to see everyone's comments. Please send to all panelists and attendees. Yes, go ahead and do that, that would be excellent. Thanks for mentioning that, Adrian. Okay, so let's look at this table. This is coming from NACE's 2021 Job Outlook, their spring update, so this is super recent data. And essentially what we can see are some of those skills from those competencies sort of broken out as far as how are employers responding when they're asked what are you looking for on resumes from early talent? All right, and so, hey, a lot of you said teamwork, good job. Look at this right up at the top. Okay, so next question, what skills do you think employers will be looking for in the next few years? Let me know in the chat, please. Okay, tech savvy, data analytics, ability to work remotely or independently. Yep. Programming, sustainability mindset, tech, tech, tech. Adaptability, environment knowledge. Awesome, keep them coming. Let's see what these skills are. All right, so according to the World Economic Forum, their future of jobs report of 2020, on the side of the slide, you can see these are what they are saying are the top 10 skills for 2025. So go ahead and take a look at those. Look back at what you all said in the chat. Are we seeing some similarities? I think so. And so a little bit more information coming out of this report is that we are seeing that um, skills gaps will remain high as in-demand skills across jobs change in the next five years. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. Also the top skills or skills groups that employers see as rising in prominence leading up to 25, 2025 include, again, a lot of things that you all are sharing in the chat critical thinking and analysis, problem solving, and then kind of like this bigger bucket of self-management, which again, you all have addressed in the chat. So active learning, resilience, stress tolerance, flexibility. I think I've seen adaptability mentioned by someone in the chat. That's absolutely relevant. 
And then Zach says some level of competency in communicating about programming languages. Yeah, so I think that that's a really great like combination of multiple skills, right? You got the technical side. How are you able to explain that to others? Absolutely. Thank you so much for that, Zach. Okay, so what is happening? Where is it all coming from? Again, here's some really great um, graphics from that Future of Jobs report from the World Economic Forum. So this first graphic over on the side that says COVID-19 is pushing companies. Here we can see some stats on like what's been happening, especially in response to in reaction to COVID. This was already happening. It just was accelerated, right? It was acceler accelerated because of COVID. And so we're all experiencing this in some way, shape or form, but we've seen a rise in scaling and moving to remote work. We're seeing a rise in acceleration in transferring what we do to the digital space. And we're also seeing a rise in an increase in a transferring of automation of tasks, right? Okay. And so this other image on the other side of the slide with the blue 97 million on the top and the 85 million on the bottom, here we can see like a list of jobs that are going to decrease in demand. And then on the top, a list of jobs that are going to increase in demand in response to these changes. So if you look at the list of those jobs underneath decreasing job demand, why are they decreasing? They're decreasing because they're getting digitalized and a lot of the associated tasks are just becoming automated. So people don't necessarily need to do them anymore. And then what we're seeing is that with this increased job list, that these are the jobs that are taking advantage of, okay, so like now that something's been digitalized, now that something's been automated, okay, so what are we doing now? Where are we innovating? What is the forward motion of the future of work? And that's what these jobs are addressing. Hey, so one last bit of information for you. I thought it was interesting to see what's happening with companies and how are they responding more internally to these shifts and changes. So this is some information around closing skills gap from McKinsey and Company's 2021 global survey on skilling. And so as you can see, 69% of organizations are doing more internal skill building than they were before COVID. Internal means that they're looking at their current talent, the people that are currently working for them, and they're focusing on skilling those folks, right? So how are they building up new skills or reskilling or redeploying them into different types of work or evolving the jobs that they did? So that's what that means. Um, something interesting, so basic digital skills, that focus is up by 16% from 2019. And then again, we're seeing like this constant theme that these results again point to a shift in the most important skills to develop. Empathy, leadership, adaptability, and those advanced cognitive skills. And so this little tree on the side, super cute, um, it's sort of pulling some of those out. But as you can see, all of those skills on the tree do fit in to these bigger categories. Okay. So we've kind of gone over um, some data about COVID, right of automation, reaction to, um, again, reaction to COVID. And what we're seeing are some constant themes, right? And so what I want to ask you all, and I want to hear from you, is why do you think that skills in these big bucket areas, technical, cognitive, social, emotional, why do you think these matter? Why are they rising to the top? Let me know what you think in the chat. So Kat says, there are some skills that can't be learned or executed by machines, yes those that are unique to the human experience and cognitive ability. How very eloquently communicated. Thank you so much, Kat. I think you're onto something. Daniel says, technical, somebody needs to be able to repair broken machines. <laughs> yes, that is also true. Thank you, Daniel. Anyone else?
Okay, Greta says, social and emotional skills are, have always been important. It helps to understand what the customer wants. Oh, I love that response. Thank you, Greta. So yeah, keep thinking about this. I think um, Kat, you really succinctly sort of like explain that to us. So what did we, what did we see and what have we all been experiencing in the last year or so? Basically our whole world's flipped upside down and that has also been felt and had an impact in our workplaces, right? And so why do these types of skills matter? Because the way that we're working has changed and it's gonna to continue to change. The skills that we need to manage that change and survive that change and adapt to that change, those are all social human, uniquely human skills. So I love the way that you said that, Kat. Um, we are creative, innovative, imaginative, amazing humans, right? And so these particularly human skills, these are the ones that we're really gonna to need to maximize and be open to developing. Especially again, because as we talked about with the increase in digitalization and with automation, well also who's building those processes? Who's building the software? Who's writing the code to build products that even like a UCLA Career Center uses to accommodate those transitions, right? Like we, as an example, the UCLA Career Center, we use something called Handshake. You all use it too, right? And so Handshake has, for example, helped to automate some of our processes, including how do you sign up for an appointment with one of our career educators? And a human, very creative, talented humans built Handshake. So let me see what else is in the chat. All right, B says the human touch precisely. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name, but Salstava, you said, oh, Salsi, I love that. Emotional, times are becoming more stressful with a growing importance and skills required in multiple fields. Yeah, so we're not surprised. We all are going through it right now. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of your contributions in the chat. Okay, so let's think back. We looked at that NACE list of eight list, and then we also looked at that World Economic Forum's top 10 skills of 2025 list. So we looked at two lists. Let me know in the chat what's different between them, what stood out to you, did anything surprise you? Do you have any reactions, questions, comments, anything about those lists? Let me know what you think in the chat. So it's okay if you are just thinking about this to yourself where you are. What, oh, just a minute before I go off on what I was gonna say, there are a little bit, uh, there's some motion in the chat, yay. Okay, so V says, so project management, V, is project management something that stood out to you or surprised you? And then Daniel, you were pleasantly surprised to see equity, empathy, et cetera included. Me too. <laughs> Hannah says, I was surprised so many of them were soft skills when it feels like employers are searching for hard skills. Yes, and so again, like thinking back to, I think the McKinsey report, they said that this is what is on the rise is this emphasis on the value and the development of soft skills. And going back to the last question where I asked you like, why are these important? There's just so much chaos and change and transition, right? And if we don't have well-developed emotional intelligence, quote unquote, soft skills, it's gonna get rough, right? So we need to, we need to really value compassion, care, empathy, assuming the best intentions from folks, because ultimately, what do we know? We know that we're all just trying to do our best, right? And so I think that finally, we're seeing some of that reflected in the data, especially quote, on these soft skills that haven't necessarily been valued, but we all know they're important. So it's just nice to see that they're rising in prominence. Thank you for sharing that reflection, Hannah. 
Okay, so what I was going to say is hopefully what we're also realizing is that, again, if you're coming to this event, maybe feeling a little anxious that there are going to be a bunch of skills you never heard of, or you have a lot of work to do that you don't, right? I don't think any of the skills on here are super surprising. I didn't see anything. I was like, what? It all makes sense. So hopefully that makes you all feel better. <laughs> I know it makes me feel better. All right. How can we show these skills in initial application process where the job description says a lot about hard skills? Well, that's where the Career Center and all of our resources can come in to support you in making sure that your bullet points are super powered because that's where we are able to communicate our skills is in A, our resume. And then also if you're writing a cover letter, you can also adjust those there. Okay, so we are going to take a little bit of a minute, a cool, calm, collected minute and talk about navigating ongoing change. Just want to talk to you all about uh, some mindset and tactic tips to help us all kind of like surf the wave of all the changes going on. So first of all, I want to emphasize that my advice to you is focus on what you can control. The reason I start there is just because there's so much that we just can't. We can't control what's going on with COVID. We can't control what jobs are hiring and what, like, and if we get the job, right? Like there's some things that we can't control, but what we can control is our reaction and our response and what we do in reaction to some of these things, right? So let's focus on like what we can control. Okay, so how do you do that? <laughs> it's easier said than done. So mindset, first of all, practicing something called acceptance is very helpful. And when I say practice acceptance, it just means again, like go back to what Alexis just say, I can't control that. Let that sink in, right? It's again, it's easier said than done. I can't control fill in the blank, but what I can control is how much time I spend on tailoring my resume, how, how much self care I practice, how I spend my time in general. I have control over that. So let me focus on that and just accept that there are some other things that are outside of me that I can't control. That will give you so much peace. <laughs> uh, next tip is cultivate your curiosity. So as we've seen from all of the shared data, there's a lot of change going on, a lot of shift. The future of work is constantly evolving. And the best thing that we can do is be curious about it, be engaged, be enthusiastic to learn more. We might have heard about something called a fixed mindset. This is something that we want to move away from. We want to be open. We want to be curious versus a fixed mindset, which is more about, I'm used to doing it like this, or we've always done it like that, or the last place I was at, they did it like this. So this is all I'm going to do. This is not the type of mindset that's going to serve you. So open up, be curious. Relevant, next thing I'm going to recommend is to adopt a lifelong learning approach. And so what do I mean by that, and I'm gonna to get to this when we talk about your skills and your skill stack, is that just because we graduate from college and we have our bachelor's degree and we had like that one internship and we got some skills out of it, doesn't mean that we're done learning. Um, again, as we've seen from the data that I shared, the desired skills and the type of work and the way that we work and how we work is constantly evolving. And so we need to do the same thing. We need to be constantly evolving, constantly learning new skills, seeking out new information, innovating, right? So adopt that lifelong, lifelong learning approach and you are going to be successful. And then a huge, huge thing, which is why I put it last, my last tip for you is Please, please, please include self-care in your professional development search process. If you, for example, are time blocking out your schedule and you know that you have eight hours of classes, the accompanying time to actually complete your assignments, you're maybe working on your job search for, well, it depends on what stage you are in, two to 10 hours a week, who knows? Um, if you are not including in all of that time blocking, when are you taking care of yourself, which includes prepping food for the week, grocery shopping, bathing, 
hanging out with your family and loved ones, maybe practicing some movement of your body, you're going to hit a wall, you're going to burn out. And so absolutely the whole pie of how we're spending our time, please tuck in some self-care time. This includes sleep. Get some sleep, get enough sleep. Okay, checking the chat to make sure that there's nothing new. Nope, okay. Okay, so some tactics, how do we do this? Oh my gosh. So first of all, take advantage of resources that are available to you, which you are all already doing. For example, by attending this event that's hosted by the UCLA Career Center. So especially while you are a UCLA student, there is so much that you have access to, so many resources. So please take advantage of everything that is freely offered. It's not going to hurt. It's only going to help. Second, do your research. So that ties back up to cultivate your curiosity and adopt a lifelong learning approach. If you are, for example, looking at a position description and there's something there that you've never heard of, go down the little Google rabbit hole, figure out what that is, learn a little bit more about it. And then again, as I'm going to recommend later, maybe watch a video on it. Maybe take a little short course on it. Maybe if there's a class that um, is relevant, take a class that covers that. Okay, lean into virtual networking. We all know that eventually life is going to return to somewhat quote unquote normal. However, some things aren't gonna change and some things are good. And so one of those is the fact that we can now do virtual, we can all do networking in the virtual space. So what that means is instead of you requesting to do like an informational interview, I call them a coffee chat in person, absolutely do them over zoom do them over phone people actually i think prefer it. i know i do because i don't have to worry about getting somewhere <laughs> what i'm necessarily wearing i don't have to also worry about maybe buying someone something like if we're going to lunch and so it saves a lot of time and so i think professionals if, if they're the ones that you're like reaching out to for these they're very happy to accommodate these requests because it's actually more convenient. So lean into that virtual networking just because it's not happening in person doesn't mean that it still can't be done. It can absolutely still be done. And then lastly, what we're gonna talk about next is always be skilling, upskilling and reskilling. All right, so that's what we're gonna talk about. Okay, and let me see quickly in the chat. There's one question. Is there a thing called too much self-care? And if so, does that lead to procrastination? And how can we tackle that issue? Sorry if this is a bit of a late question. There's no, there's no such thing as a late question. Um, so I think that I would push this back onto you, Salsi, and say, why are you calling um, self-care, like on what point of the spectrum of time spent doing self-care slash procrastination, like where does it turn into that for you? And really doing some reflection on being honest with yourself to say, am I being intentional about the self-care versus am I doing this to avoid doing something that I don't want to do? And we all do this. <laughs> And so I think what I would say is maybe go a few steps back, know that self-care is important. Procrastination happens, so maybe practice some acceptance about that. You can even factor it in. I know I'm gonna do a little bit of procrastinating, so maybe don't set too tight of deadlines for yourself. But then also just, again, practice some self-compassion to say, I procrastinated a little bit today. What is that a sign of? I'm burnt out. So what do I need to change? Hopefully that's helpful. And if anyone else wants to offer some advice or feedback to Saucy, please do. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about how you can future-proof your career. And that means we're going to be speaking about skilling, upskilling, and reskilling, all of which are things that we all can and should be doing. And I want to emphasize that you are already doing this. Okay, so skilling is basically what you're doing all the time in anything that you're doing presently. So if you have an internship, you're in classes, you're in a student organization, um, you are learning skills all the time. That's just actively happening, okay? Upskilling is more like aspirational. So say you wanna get a promotion or you wanna apply for this position. 
and there you have a little bit of a gap in the level or just you don't have experience in anything at all, you want to upskill, right? And so you want to increase um, knowledge and expertise that you have in something already, or you just want to gain knowledge and skills in something that you don't have. And then lastly is reskilling. And so reskilling goes back to some of the data that we looked at as far as um, jobs that are dropping in demand and jobs that are rising in demand. And what are the skills that are needed for one to be successful in those types of roles that are growing in demand? And so especially internally, companies are focused on reskilling their current talent, people that are currently working for them to say, okay, we used to do this and it required these skills. What we want is for you to do this and what do we need to get you up or reskilled in and trained on to be able to perform this new function? So that's what that means. Oh, and yay, Saucy Black. I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad that that was helpful. Okay, so let me know what you think in the chat, please. What do you think are ways that you can develop skills that can go on your resume? How can we develop these skills? Let me know in the chat. B says attending a Toastmaster. Vicky says do an internship or take a course. So V, attending a Toastmaster. I've heard of Toastmaster. I know that that is a community where you can practice your public speaking skills. And so that's definitely something that, that you can put on your resume. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Zach says LinkedIn learning, other learning platforms, improving communication skills through networking, talking to people. Saucy says project management, efficiency in an internship. So yeah, you're gonna develop the skills in your internship. Absolutely. Hannah says leadership positions in campus clubs slash sports teams, question mark? No question mark, you're right. <laughs> and then Asta says figuring out skills, you might be weak in and working on these skills. So this is a strategy that we definitely wanna use to figure out um, how we can go about developing skills that we can then put onto our resume. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's go ahead and look at all the ways that we can develop skills that can go on our resume. Okay, so I'm calling this your skill stack. <laughs> I think it's super fun. Um, but in this table are all the ways that I've seen, it may not be exhaustive, but all of the ways that I've seen that one can communicate um, skills on their resume. And so again, looking back to what you all mentioned in the chat, you're right on. So what does it include? It includes those jobs and internships, volunteer work, research, experience that you gain through student or participation, studying abroad. Your education absolutely goes on your resume. Relevant coursework as relevant, right? Um, Project-based experiences, competitions, hackathons, and self-initiated experiences such as articles you write or websites you build or portfolio that you have. And then there are a few items on this table that are bolded and starred. That's because we're gonna talk about them in more depth, but those are e-learning credentials, micro-credentials, simulated work experiences, and micro-internships. Okay, so here's a little bit more information. Again, this is coming from that, I believe that job outlook update from NACE, yes. And what I think is super interesting about this is this is how employers are responding to say, okay, if I had two resumes of equally qualified candidates in front of me, what is going to impress me the most? What is going to carry the most weight? So go ahead and take a look at these. Not surprising, what do we see in the top two? Has completed an internship with your organization? Has internship experience in your industry? Why are these at the top? Because it's super, super relevant to whatever position this candidate is applying to. What I do want to draw your attention to though is look right down at the bottom. It says other 3.9. If this table had other in order like all the other items, I don't know why they did that. It would be number three. And what does other include? So I was curious about that and I looked into it. 
it includes what we're going to talk about today. So employers basically said it means that they are demonstrating a passion and enthusiasm or an interest in our space. And it includes project-based learning, it includes micro-credentials, it includes project-based learning. And so in the future, I really hope that this gets broken out from that really vague other category because those types of experiences are on the rise and they are joining the skills stack. Okay, okay so I promised that I would talk a little bit about how do you figure out um, what to focus on when you're maybe thinking of applying. So what I did is I pulled um, a position description from one of our very awesome employer partners, Lockheed Martin. And so this is a position description of a human resources intern. This is recruiting right now. And so what I want us all to do is take a look at this. What from that skill stack that we just talked about, would you wanna put on your resume? Also, what are you seeing on here that you've never heard of before that you should probably do some research on? Um, what are you seeing here that they're emphasizing that you might need to develop a little bit more? What are you seeing here that you know you have the experience and they're just calling it something a little bit different so you need to translate it? Okay, so what do we think? What is gonna go on your resume? What should you research? What should you develop? What should you translate? What is calling out to you all? Let me know in the chat. I'm going to kick us off until we get a little bit of action in the chat. So if I'm looking at the description, it is emphasizing that you will be tasked with duties in various disciplines that include projects. So I see the word projects, various projects. I know that I might want to emphasize my experience working on projects, multiple projects, project management. I've got Zach saying teamwork, communication and project management, multitasking came up several times in the skill section. So that's a really good point that you include came up several times, Zach. If something is being emphasized like that, you definitely wanna make sure that you are reflecting that on the resume and the cover letter because it means that this employer values that, right? Okay, anything else people are seeing? Let me know in the chat. Um, and so under basic qualifications, there's that education. So ding, ding, we're putting our education on there. Um, they are calling out some specific fields. So I think, again, if you have relevant coursework that speaks to that, you're going to pop that on your resume. Kirsten says, I have experience with reading legal documents, but not familiar with some of those employment laws may want to research them. Absolutely. Way to flex that curiosity, Kirsten. Gold star for you. Um, Daniel says Microsoft Office mentioned as an example of technology experience and as its own skill. So that is more of a technical skill. We definitely want to mention that and we can do that in multiple ways. And Derek is noticing that there's a heavy emphasis on knowledge of tech programs. So yeah, if you have experience with some of these programs and you're going to want to emphasize that. If you don't, you're going to want to do some research that you can really speak to your enthusiasm and learning more or do a little bit of learning in the meanwhile if you can. Okay, great. So I hope that this is helpful that what we can do when we're thinking about great, I have this whole skill stack. I have so many different things that I could put on my resume. We want to make sure that we're being relevant. And so Absolutely, we're looking at the words and the skills and what's being emphasized in a position description to guide us in that. Okay. Okay, so next, as promised, I'm going to highlight a few resources um, that will help you um, develop skills that can go on your resume and on LinkedIn. So the first 
One that I'm going to talk about with you all is something called Parker Dewey. So Parker Dewey is essentially an online marketplace where employers go to put projects on that they would like students to complete. And then students go on there and they search for projects. And if there's anything that's interesting to you, you go ahead and apply. And so we have an existing partnership with Parker Dewey. You can go ahead and log on anytime and check those out. But we, uh, we call them micro internships. And the reason they're called micro internships is because they're a little bit different from a traditional internship. These are short-term paid professional assignments. The work is similar to that that would be given to new hires or interns. Um, they do take place year round, which is great. The awesome thing though, is that they're just shorter and that's where the micro comes in. So the time it takes for you to complete these project-based experiences is approximately 10 to 40 hours um, and about one week to a month is when they're due after like the project kicks off. They're open to any student. As I mentioned, new projects are added often. Uh, one thing that I have heard is also that some companies have preferences and they can say if they want, for example, a UCLA student uh, to complete their project. So if you do end up taking advantage and utilizing Parker Dewey, please make sure to update your profile um, so that those projects will be served up to you as a UCLA student. So what are the benefits of participating in a micro internship? Well, it's mutually beneficial to you and to the employer. The employer has a project that they need to get done. Um, so you're helping them get that project taken care of. And then for you, you are getting to expand your experience and explore career paths. You're getting to develop and demonstrate skills through the quality of the work, through the work that you actually provide back to that employer. You're enhancing your industry knowledge and you're also optimizing your chances of getting hired by this company in the future and also by other companies in the future. So Parker Dewey, again, they shared that if someone does a really great job, they're more likely to get hired again by that same company if they have another project that comes up. And then also because this can go on your resume, think back to that other. Um, this is another way that you can demonstrate an interest or a passion and engagement in a field or space of your interest. One thing that I really like <clears throat> about Parker Dewey, along with the other resources I'm going to share, is that they do provide very specific guidance on how to place this information both on your resume and on your LinkedIn. And so definitely take advantage of that and utilize the guidance they provide so that you make sure you're putting it on your resume appropriately. Okay, next is something called Forage. I am a huge Forage fangirl. Um, and so Forage provides <clears throat> on-demand simulated work experience programs. They call them simulated work experience programs. And so right now they have over 70 um, self-paced on-demand programs from a large variety of companies and of industries and of like role types. Um, and they are sponsored by Fortune 500 companies globally. So what Forge does is they partner with companies and say, hey, what sort of program do you want to provide that addresses a skills gap that you're seeing? Um, let's work together to build out this curriculum and then we're going to host this on our platform. These are accessible by anyone. So not just students, literally anyone can do a Forge program. They take around four to six hours to complete. I highly encourage you to go and check out their directory of opportunities. Um, when you look at it, it will tell you very explicitly, what are the skills you're going to learn? What are the learning outcomes? Why does, should this matter? Why should you be interested? And they're always adding new programs. The benefits are pretty much the same as those of Parker Dewey, so I'm not going to go into too much uh, depth for this. One thing, though, that I do know about Ford, which is a little bit different, is that folks that do complete um, these programs with them, companies do tend to reach out to those folks to invite them to uh, unique networking opportunities or also to say, hey, we're, we're hiring. We noticed that you've engaged with us through Forage. Take a look at these upcoming opportunities. The other thing is that Forage is really great. And again, they also provide information and guidance on how to include these experiences on your resume and LinkedIn. Um, but they, they additionally show you how to post and share about the fact that you've completed an experience on LinkedIn 
And these posts, and I see them all the time from students, they get a lot of attention and a lot of traction on LinkedIn. They're very impressive. It's great branding for you. It's also great branding from the companies that are sponsoring these programs. And it just makes you look, again, enthusiastic. Like you have a passion for the space and it's great public free publicity for the company. So everyone wins. So go please check out Forge. I love it so much. Okay. And then lastly, a few of you have already mentioned this, LinkedIn Learning. And so LinkedIn Learning offers macro and micro credentials. What is that? Um, and so I'm gonna go into that a little bit more, but what does LinkedIn include? They have 16,000 plus self-paced expert-led content in seven languages. Um, so these include videos, courses, and learning paths. So videos, going back to that curiosity, like what is this? They have a video on almost anything. So if you're not sure what something is, watch one of their videos. Courses, this is more of a micro-credential. These tend to be shorter. They take maybe an hour or two to view and complete. You will get a cute little um, certificate of completion that you can download. I love downloading them. It's just for me, but I don't care. Um, and you can also opt into adding it to your LinkedIn profile. And then there are learning paths. So that's what I would consider a macro-credential. And they, are, they consist of multiple courses. And they usually take upwards of eight to 20, I've seen hours to complete. Um, but those will carry a lot more weight because you've completed an entire learning path as opposed to a single course. They're open to anyone with access to LinkedIn Learning. And LinkedIn is absolutely taking advantage of all the trending, skilling, upskilling that's going on in the future of work. So they're always adding new courses and apparently they add over 50 of them a week. And so again, um, the benefits are pretty much the same as those that I've already reviewed. <clears throat> One thing though that I wanna emphasize is that LinkedIn, along with there's a lot of other companies that offer similar types of um, skilling opportunities, but LinkedIn has trust and reputation. And so if you have this on your resume and or on your LinkedIn profile, you know that um, recruiters and anyone else who's reviewing an application material is gonna trust that reputation. And so it's just gonna look that much better for you as a candidate. And again, LinkedIn offers advice and guidance on how to add, well, adding it to your profile is easy, um, but including on your resume, they do include that. So take advantage of those resources. All right, so we're pretty much down to the end of our content. Just want to review a couple more of the great resources that the Career Center provides to you all. We've already talked about Forge and Parker Dewey. Um, VMOC, absolutely want to emphasize VMOC. It is a 24-7 accessible AI-powered resume editing tool, free for all of you. So please take advantage, go check out VMOC. Um, it's going to help you so much. The other one that I want to emphasize, um, especially because I'm a nervous interviewer, is InterviewStream. And so InterviewStream is another platform that we provide you all access to where you can um, practice interviewing and record yourself. There are built-in questions. You can um, enter tailored questions. You can also share the recordings of yourself with others so that they can watch it and give you feedback. So I am just such a huge fan of that one as well. Okay, so a couple little things here. We're at the end. So please, if you've been holding off on asking your question, now is the time. Throw it into the chat. Um, we absolutely want you to connect with us at the UCA Career Center. We're still here for you. We want to support you. And so, yes, you can figure out and access our virtual services by going to the website that's included. Send any questions that you might have to questions at career.ucla.edu. Follow us on our very social media handles. Please connect with me on LinkedIn. I love connecting with students. I love seeing your updates. Also, if you have questions, you can message me on LinkedIn. I do not mind. And then um, lastly, I'm going to put a link into the chat. I'll also email it out later, but we um, would like you to complete a survey um, of today's event so that we can see your feedback and see if there's any way that we can improve in the future. So here's that link. And Dodds says, will you be sending this recording? I won't be sending the recording, but I will be sending the deck and the link to the UCLA Career Center's YouTube channel. We upload our recordings usually within a few days. 
I always just say check on the Monday after the week that the event occurred and it should be there. So that's, that's what I will include. And then Kirsten asks, um, do we get access to LinkedIn Learning through UCLA? Yes. And so that is something that I'm going to send you information on. Yeah, I promise free resources. So yes, okay. Any other questions? Well, thank you, Rick. I hope that I hope everyone else was wonderful too. <laughs> this is a favorite topic of mine to, to talk about. I get to nerd out a lot. Okay. Any other questions? If not, thank you, thank you, thank you everyone so much for joining on a Thursday of week eight in spring quarter. Good luck with finals to my grads. Congratulations to everyone else. Please don't forget about self-care. I'm also gonna send out some resources about that. Have a great rest of your day, everyone.